And I'll tell you guys since we're since we're all friends. Every character I write has a piece of me in them. Hi, I'm Lee Bardugo, and you're listening to the Grisha Cast. Welcome to Grisha Cast, episode 67. In this episode, we are covering chapters 29 through 31 from the book King of Scars. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry from Nashville, Tennessee. This is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by the wonderful Lee Bardugo. Moi Savayani Casters. Hello. We are here. We're here. Oh no, I said that again. I try to get out of that habit of saying that. I used to always say that when we started. Of what, we're here? Yeah, which and makes then, no sense but at the, all. And the only response that I have is we're queer. <laughs> so I don't know what else to do with myself. <laughs> well, maybe that will be our tagline. <laughs> we didn't steal that from anybody. No, not at all. I don't even know who originally said that. All right. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and thank some listener cities. Let's do that. Mm. We're going to say thank you to our friends in Cardiff, Wales. Wow. Yes. And then our new friends over in Topsail, Canada. Oh my goodness. Yay, thank, thank, thank you, you so much. You guys are awesome. And for those of you asking how you can help, we would greatly appreciate tips. A dollar goes a long way. Your hit tips will help us to bring you the Grisha cast. You can Venmo a tip at B O D H I M M or Cash App Dollar Sign B O D H I M M. Also, leaving a review on your podcast platform, liking and following us on our socials, especially YouTube, mm -hmm. it would make us so so very happy. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> now, since we've gotten through all that, how are you? Woo! It has been a day, y'all. Mm. No uh, specifics. It's just <laughs> a day. Hey. Everybody's trying it. Let's just say that. Hey, bring you, it. You can't try it with me. Tomorrow's Friday, <laughs> though. So, you know, the weekend is almost here. And, you know, we're, <laughs> we're this much closer to ha wa being able to watch Shadow and Bone. We are. And we're reading Rule of Wolves. Oh, my God. Yes, we are. We just had a great discussion. I know, but I really irritated you because I haven't read as far as you had. So. It's not irritating, but I just I have to stop myself because now we're like on switched roles. I know that you're you've usually... always <laughs> been the one to know everything, and now I do not everything. But. I'm on chapter thirty three. Um, and he just started the second part, yeah, so like I, I have to stop myself because those of you that have read it or that you're at the part that I'm at, you know what happens between his part and my part. Um, hmm. And so it's like. Eh. I can't oh. say anything. I'm excited. Um, but now I know how you felt this entire year. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it horrifying? And like, kind of like, a, it drives you a little crazy. It does. Like, I don't want to ruin it for you. But you have to talk to somebody about it. I know. So See? if somebody would like to email me, <laughs> Terry <laughs> at <laughs> GrishaCast.com, or you can send me oh. a, um, a D at slide to my DMs on yeah. Instagram, Grisha Terry. Um, then we can have a lively discussion about it if you want to discuss things prior to chapter 33, because I don't have anyone else to talk about it. <laughs> well, I know that one of our fans, um, I believe her name is Amelia Matthias, I think, on mm. Instagram. Mm -hmm. She um, messaged me the day the book came out and said, I just finished. Oh, it. my gosh. So she obviously started the wow. same time I did, which was at midnight on that wow. night. But I didn't keep reading. I've been like slowly reading yeah. it because there's a lot in there. But I also just I'm, I don't know. I'm I'm cringing. Because I know there's a lot that's happening, and I'm just kind of like, I yes. don't know where it's going to go. And I get the two that it's like, we don't know where it's going to go from here or if it's going to go from here. And so you want it to to last, and I get that. Yeah. But, like, it literally kills me <laughs> that I need to know what's happening. Well, I will make sure that over the weekend I do some deep reading and get in there and hopefully finish it off. Because... <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> I cannot promise that. I am finishing up my studio. Oh, so yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. So I don't know how much I'll read this weekend, but maybe you'll catch up. Yeah, probably. So <laughs> and then we can have a, a much livelier conversation. So what chapter are you on? Thirty three. You're thirty three. Okay. And I'm just starting I'm literally starting part two. Yes. The making at the heart of the world. Ooh. Which is so cool. But I can't believe we're there. I know. So Ugh. So many things are going to happen. I know. <laughs> and it's neat. So It is neat. It's got... so good. I'm enjoying it. It really is a really good read. It is. It's very like, there's definitely a lot going on. 
I can't see this as a book that you would just randomly pick up and start the Grisha verse no. from here. <laughs> oh, gosh, no. She's always said that all the other books were like entryways into this world. But this one, I really don't think you would have uh-uh. any clue what's going on. No. I mean, she does do kind of a good job of like, you know, here's this person and here's a quick background. Well, yes. But right. still, that's not enough to like really fully understand why they're doing what they're doing. And this book is pretty much written for people like us that oh, have yeah. read the entire series so like everything about it is just yeah because she said that this was a book that was going to wrap up a lot of things but be open ended yeah like so she can also like go back in there i still am calling that i just like i mean my one thing is i do think that nikolai is not going to make it i yes, said that already that, yes that was I, your prediction yep i think he's do you have a prediction that you can say? My big prediction is that Hana is mm. going to be the ruler of the wolves. She's either mm. going to take the crown in Fjorda, or she is going to take her father's place and do something else with all of that. I don't know, but she's going to be I'm gonna see that. a big ruler in Fjorda, um, and I think she's going to do it as a boy. That would be really cool. I would totally yes. take that. So, and you told me one thing that I have to keep reading because my favorite character is Zoya, and you kept on kind of hinting that there's some big reveals that I haven't read yet. Yes, we learn more about Zoya. Okay. so Which makes sense because we're learning about everything. So it's not yeah. a huge, like, spoiler alert. We're learning more about every yeah. character. So I'm not getting uh, giving anything away, but yeah, I've you seen, will want to. I've seen people posting stuff on Facebook and, like, Luckily, I haven't seen anything that, like, I mean, the spoilers are in the comments. But, yeah, I haven't uh, seen any spoilers. Everyone's been really good, I think. Yeah. I haven't, have. I haven't like, run across anything I didn't want to see. Mm-hmm. I have seen, though, like, some people said they read it and they hated it. And see, I, I but I, <laughs> I, I just don't get that. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you're a big fan of the Grishaverse, I don't see how you could hate it. Something drastic is going to happen There's for no- me to hate it. Yeah, like, I mean, I find it so entertaining. Like, mm-hmm. I, I love it. Like, I just, like, I, I can't. And I, ugh, it's so good. It's so good. Wow. <laughs> so, well, we're <sighs> just going to have to see. And, you know, don't forget, if you guys listen to our little talk with Lee Bardugo, she did say that she couldn't wait to come back to discuss this book with us. Yes, she so, wanted to discuss the book and the show. Yep. Mm-hmm. So... That will be happening sometime in the future. <laughs> it will be a whole spoiler just discussion. <gasps> so, oh, <laughs> how exciting. That's exciting. By the way, thank you for everybody. I think I've already said this, but thank you for everybody that helped participate in the Lee Bardugo birthday gift. It is still in production. I know we're a little going to be, we're going to be a little late getting this birthday present to her, but that's okay because she's still going to love it because you guys really went all in and did it, it's, it's really going to be incredible. There's some awesome stuff in there that I think she's really going to enjoy. So. It was fun. Yeah. It's really neat to see, like, just all the different, like, all the different things that people sent in. And there were even, like, things from, like, kids, like, Aww. by parents, like, for fans and, like, had, like, their kids, like, answer some of the questions. It's kind of cute. Aww. So. And I enjoyed writing about Ism Root. <laughs> yes. I ended up writing Aww. another, like, I ended up writing one about, like, fairies, which I had never Aww. expected that I was going to be able to do. But I just did it. And then, like, at the very last moment, I decided I was going to, like, edit down the story and I threw it in there. Cute. I know. I'd never written about fairies, but I'd always wanted to. Well, there you go. I know. It's kind of cool. A little prompt. So we should probably get started. <laughs> yeah, we could literally Cause, talk forever. Well, because we've got like three chapters. You have a lot, don't you? Yes, both of my chapters were quite a lot. Okay, well, get so going, So I have girl. tried very hard. To <laughs> summarize? Yes. Okay. Words are hard, clearly. Um, hey. <laughs> okay, so we're starting off with chapter 29, mm. which follows our boy Isaac. After the gilded bog incident with the Ismarja issue, Hmm. um, Isaac isn't very happy about going to meetings because he's afraid he's going to get found out through his nervousness. He gets through a finance meeting, all right, but then he's cornered by Hiram Schenk, who says, do you think you can continue to play games with us? Which would have made me pee my pants. Like, (laughs) yeah. If like, you're Isaac and you know what's going on, and he comes up to you and he's like, do you think you can keep doing this? He'd be like, uh. Poor guy. 
important. So he remembers what Jinya told him to say in this situation. And so he looks at him and says, I beg your pardon. <laughs> mm-hmm. Apparently Jinya said that will work for anything to like, oh. you know, in a kingly way, say, I beg your pardon. Sounds, sounds about right. So that makes Shank um, say, hey, we've caught on to this is Marja theatrics. You got it, Again, <laughs> words are hard. Hey. And they know that they are ready to give the prototype. Because there's no way that they would be so far behind. Right. Because he knows Ralph Cunn, he knows Nikolai. So he's like, yo, I know you got the goods and you're holding out. Isaac responds again with, I beg your pardon, <laughs> and storms off. So <laughs> afterwards, he's walking back and he hears the others talking about how Nikolai is now truly missing. And that the apparat has requested an audience with the king and is demanding more information on Yuri. Uh oh. Uh oh. We cannot have the apparat near what he thinks is Nikolai <laughs> because he will definitely figure that out. Ooh, maybe we should bring the apparat back for, I know this is very random, but for that <laughs> commercial that we're planning. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> anyway. Um, so he keeps on walking and he finds dear old Princess Eerie in the portrait gallery. He offers to show her around and they end up in the training rooms. He asks Tamar to give a demonstration, and she calls out Mayu um, because they think that she's the one that's going to defect. So they think that, or I guess she's calling her out so that they have a little closer bond there or something. But there's some awkwardness there. Like, everybody's acting a little weird. Um, Isaac invites Aerie to spar as well and throws her a little wooden sword. The guards try to stop her. <laughs> like, um... But she was already on the attack <laughs> to Isaac. Uh-oh. While they're sparring, Tamar is, like, kicking Mayu's butt. She's supposed to be, like, a top guard. So this is very weird. And as we look back to Isaac, he's also getting his butt kicked, <laughs> but by the princess. <sighs> so Poor Isaac. there's just some <clears throat> weirdness going on here. Then, all of a sudden, Mayu is, like, doubled over and, like, gasping for breath. Everyone is, like, on edge and trying to make excuses. And then um, they're like, you know, you have to make up for this for hurting our top guard. So they propose a private dinner. Ari and the king. Oh, how sweet. So (laughs) when everyone leaves, Tamar teases Isaac for liking Ari. Oh. Also... Well. She's a little worried that Mayu didn't fight like a top guard. Oh, yeah, because they're supposedly some pretty fierce yes. women. They train really hard. Yes. Yeah. Um, and before Tamar walks away, she tells him to despise his heart and do what needs to be done. <laughs> some advice from wise Tamar. Yes. That night, he walked into the sitting room. And Jinya, David, and the twins tell him that Fyrda has decided to march on Ravka under the Lansoff flag. What? That's yeah. Weird. That's a little weird. Their rulers Ooh. have declared for Vedic Dimidov, mm. who claims to be a Lansoff cousin and the rightful heir to the throne. Interesting. His claim is supported by a man named Magnus Opcher, who is a Fjordan shipping magnet, which means a wealthy and influential person. Girl, you, you got those words. <laughs> I do. I got the words. Woo. I say words good. Mm-hmm. Opter claims to be Nikolai's father. Such a brand, I'm sorry. Just that name. <laughs> Opter. Opter. So he claims to be Nikolai's father. Hmm. And he has the love letters from the queen to prove it. Oh. Uh-oh. So everyone starts making plans to prepare for war, and Isaac is, like, freaked out. He clearly cannot lead them to war. (laughs) Yeah, that's... He's like, I was just going to (laughs) be pretending for just a little bit. Excuse me, guys. (laughs) I'm not a king. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not going to do this war thing. Yeah. So the plan is to wait everything out till the end of the week and the final ball, and then they'll see what's going on there. The final ball. The final ball. The final rose. Yeah. Um. So it's time for Isaac and Aries one on one. Well, <laughs> sorry, Bachelor fans. <laughs> um. They bond over gross food. Talk about feeling like a fraud, and feel it or feel like a fraud as a as a royal. 
And he asks her, how would she rule if she was queen? She says, an end to war, a chance for common people to choose their own futures, a world in which families aren't torn apart by hardship or duty. She says, it must sound foolish to him, but he responds, if we don't dream, who will? So I'm putting an asterisk right there, and I'm going to say that little piece right there is going to be very, very important for our future. Yep, I, I've heard that from you. Yes, I said that earlier, but mm-hmm. I'm telling all of you now that I <laughs> <laughs> that I think that that is going to be a very important piece to our future. So he mm-hmm. then asks her if she will meet him in the conservatory during the ball, because otherwise they won't have a real moment alone. Oy. He was shocked. But she said yes. End of chapter. Bum, 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 bum. Boop, boop. <laughs> and mm-hmm. now back to Eric. Is it really? Wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Because I have next line, right? Am I? <laughs> wait. Okay, wait. <laughs> I, I love us. But, like, hold up. Yeah, you're 30. Was Nikolai 30? I thought it was 31. I thought. I thought. No, Nina's 31. Are you sure? You're absolutely sure? Positive? I'm not making Are that up. Are reading this? Okay, hold on. Let's just make sure. Well, I'll just pull out. Pull out this the book, right honey. Now. Please do, because I <laughs> can't go not in order. <laughs> Heaven forbid. We know what we've got to do, but see, Nina's thirty-one. Okay, so my chapter. You're thirty. Okay, Nikolai is thirty. Okay. Okay. Well, I. Well, yeah. <laughs> hey, makes sense. I guess. <laughs> Well, we can't be in. I'm glad we. <laughs> well, all right. We know what we're doing. We okay. are professionals. We are. Hey, at least they're different. They're stories, so I mean, it wouldn't really have mattered. No, it wouldn't have because they're not on I the mean, same side of the story. Right. So we could have just gone with it, and then we could have. Everyone else would listening. have been confused. <laughs> yeah, they would have thought we were. Crazy. Wait a minute, y'all's book are backwards. So now I'm just like all concerned. I'm like, okay, I hope I did the right chapter. And like, <laughs> holy crap. Like there's no way that, but if you you're did, sick, you yeah, did if, Nikolai's story. Yeah. And this is the, cause we're at the like big crescendo moment of this book mm-hmm. where like everything's kind of yes happening. Okay. So the Dun- Dunham all. Ooh. Yeah. Look at you all fancy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a quote from the beginning. They waited beneath a flat gray sky. It might have been dawn. It might have been dust. Magical things happened at the in-between times. Mort's of sacred amplifiers had appeared at twilight. The stag, the sea whip, the firebird, perhaps the saints were the same. Nikolai stood on the sands, flanked by Zoya and Yuri above the spot where warrior priests had once come to be transformed where the darkling had torn the world open and created the fold and where years later he had finally been defeated if there was power in this place nikolai could only hope that it was friendly and that it would help to destroy the remnants of the curse the darkling had left behind boom, boom, boom. <laughs> end quote so of course i love that stuff because you know history and things um so it's if you haven't guessed, it's time for the Obis Baya. Obis it is, bumpy. It is. It's this wonderful ceremony. Everybody get out your popcorn. Have your bees. <laughs> get your cell phones ready to film. Yes, Elizabetta. Elizabetta. has got her bees all buzzing up and <laughs> they're all around her. I she just, has bees in her bonnet. <laughs> she sure has a bee in her bonnet. Oh. 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 Wow. <laughs> That just happened and organically. If, and our poor listeners, if only I, we can't even tell that story. It would take too long and it'd go back. And anyways, she's got to be in a bonnet, be in her bonnet about it. Bonnet, whatever. Okay. Now I'm talking to the producer that people get stop. Producer has to stop <laughs> talking to me because the <laughs> listeners can't hear you. And then it makes me sound crazy. So, okay. Anyways, Woo! be in a bonnet about it. Now, Juris is the only one that's not attending, and Zoya says that he must be watching from his, like, tower. Yuri is nervous and doesn't know what to pray for, but Nick helps guide him and suggests, hey, maybe you should pray for Ravka as a start. So Yuri starts to recite the ceremonial text, and Nick reminds Zoya that if the beast overtakes him, that she must do what must be done. So, 
we gotta remember like i mean this whole obese bumpy thing is like <laughs> sounds crazy but like i mean he's trying to purge the monster from him and the only way to do that is by stabbing yourself in the heart because that all. makes a lot of sense but anyways okay so here's this next quote the hum of Elizaveta's insects rose. It's time, she said, and lifted her hands. Nikolai Lansoff, prepare yourself. Zoya released his hand and stepped away. He desperately wanted to pull her back into his arms and ask her what she'd intended to say. This is not a goodbye, he told himself, but it certainly felt like one. Thunder rumbled over the gray sky. A moment later, Nikolai realized it wasn't coming from above, but from below. The ground began to tremble, and a sound like distant hoofbeats rose from somewhere deep within the earth. It grew, an oncoming stampede that shook the sands. Elisabetta grimaced, perspiration gleaming on her brow. She loosened, she loosed a shout, and the thorn wood burst from the sand, the stalks surrounding Nikolai and Zoya twinning and twisting, the thicket growing up around them as if woven on an invisible loom. Yuri began to chant, end quote. So that's very, I, I like that. I'm just <laughs> saying, I'm just very, I'm trying to figure, like, I don't know. I visualize that, like okay. reading that. That's what I was trying it's to say. It's very descriptive. Yes, thank you. That You're is welcome. the word. See, I needed the words. Needed your words. <laughs> okay. So the thornwood rises and has golden sap dripping from it, um, mm. from its thorns. Yep. <laughs> Succulating samp. sap. Ugh. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> Yeah, well, what's really awful is poor Zoya has to take, like, this body bath in it. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> it doesn't sound, like, as luxurious as mud would be. No. I just say, like, I mean, this ain't your typical mud bath. This is a sap bath. <clears throat> sap bath. Sap. Sap. Okay, that was kind of fun to say. I don't know why. <laughs> um, I think I, I, I'm enjoying those peas today. Ooh. <laughs> okay. In it's case a weird in, night. It sure is. We said that before we yes. even started recording. Okay, so of course Zoya um, is encased in this weird sphere of sap, and it's like beginning to rise. So like, I'm just, I just envision just kind of like the magic trick that you see, like when they have the, like <laughs> somebody stuck inside this like glass like coffin thing, and the water starts yes. rising. Except it's sap. Um. Oh no! Are they gonna make it? This, of course, gets Nick, not Nick, sorry, Nikolai and his shadow monster ready to save her because she's, like, pounding on this, like, weird egg sap thing. <laughs> Sphere. I'm sorry. When you said Nick, literally the first <laughs> thing that popped in my head was St. Nick. Sorry, go on. Oh, St. Nick. Not it's, it's not that time of year. I know, but St. Nick. Yeah. Anyway. Hey. Woo! Wait till you, oh, okay. Give me more caffeine. Yeah. We do need some. So <laughs> Nikolai and the shadow um, monster have a lovely uplifting conversation back and forth to themselves. Like it just is, it lasts about six or eight pages of just, it's pretty much just self-esteem boosting for Nikolai. And I'm being completely like, I'm joking because it is just yeah. horrible. Like for six or eight pages, they're just like, the shadow monster is just like telling him how horrible he is and. Anyways, mm -hmm. obviously the shadow is trying to convince him not to proceed with the ceremony and trying to convince him not to do this. Finally, Nikolai is just had it and he remembers something that Zoya said that kind of knocks him into like realizing, okay, what am I here for? And he grabs a thorn um, and stabs it into his heart. He opens his eyes and all of a sudden he sees the shadow monster, but hovering like in front of him. And it's like the first time, because he's never seen it. Mm -hmm. He's always been it. So that's got to be kind of odd. Um, he grabs for his saber so he can kill the monster. But all of a sudden, the thornwood has taken hold of him and he can't move. Not only that, but he's starting to realize that that sap sphere Zoyazin is just still filling up with sap. And, like, I mean, it, that ain't supposed to happen. Yeah. Mm -mm. So, the th all of a sudden, thorns burst through both of Nikolai's hands and legs, kind of sounding like a really odd crucifixion. Um, <laughs> Something like that. And, anyways, that leads us into our scene. Cool. 
And um, yeah, this is pretty much just the end of this chapter, and we're just going to have fun with it. So Yeah, this should be fun. Yeah. <laughs> so a special thank you for our background music created by Kendra Dantes mm-hmm. and produced by Year 26. So you ready, girl? Sure. Okay. So curtain up. I know the pain is bad, said Elisabetta, as she drifted through the thicket. But the thorns will keep you from forcing the darkness to recede. What is this? Nikolai panted, pain searing through him as he tried to break free. I had hoped you might simply let the monster overtake you, that your demon would win. It would have made all of this easier. Nikolai's mind struggled to make sense of what Elisabetta was saying. You're a prisoner here, Nikolai said. After all this, you cannot mean to stay. Certainly not. The boundaries of the fold will remain intact. And here, my brethren will be held captive still. But I will be free because I will be bound to him. Nikolai did not need to ask who she meant. The Darkling. She nodded once. The true king of Ravka? His spirit lived on with his power. It is only in need of a vessel. The thicket and Nikolai saw a pale body borne atop a, br- a beer of branches. It cannot be. He had stood on the shores of the fold and watched the darkling burn, and yet here his body was whole and uncorrupted. It had to be some kind of illusion or a brilliant facsimile. Yuri stood beside the beer, the pages of liturgical Ravkin discarded. He wore a robe of black roses emblazoned with the sun and eclipse. Forgive me. He said, his face contrite. I wish it did not have to be so. I wish you could both survive this day. But the Starless One is Ravka's greatest hope. He must return. I find I do not know what to pray for. Go on, Yuri, Elisabetta said. This honor is yours. Nikolai remembered Yuri babbling when they first came to the saint's fold. All is as was promised. He thought of the curling vine Elisabetta had so soothingly laid across Yuri's shoulders. She hadn't been trying to comfort him. She'd been afraid of what else he might say. Yuri has his role to play in this, too. He'd said the Darkling had come to him in a vision. Yuri approached the shadow beast and reached for the glowing shard wedged within his heart. Nikolai knew with sudden surety that if he pulled the thorn from the monster's chest first, it would be an end to everything. Don't, Yuri, he said. He did not like the pleading in his voice. It did not become a king. Don't do this. You're a good man, said Yuri, but Ravka needs more than a man. He reached up and grabbed the thorn. No, Nikolai would not allow it. He had opened the door. It was time to walk through. The monster was not the Darkling, not yet. It was something else still, something that had longed for for its own life, that had its own appetites, that he had lived with for three years. Why do you hide the demon? Because it was angry, hungry, full of broken animal longing. And though Nikolai might not like it, those things were all a part of him still. Like calls to like. He had fought the demon, now he would feed it. Nikolai shut his eyes and did what that dark voice had told him to do. He let go of the perfect prince, the good king. He reached for all of the wounded, shameful things he'd done. He'd been so sure he had to hide. In this moment, he was not kind or merciful or just. He was just a monster. He left his mortal body behind. When Nikolai opened his eyes, he was looking at Yuri from a different angle, close enough to see the smudge of his glasses, the wiry hair of his scrabbly beard. Nikolai felt his wings beat the air, felt his demon heart race. He released a snarl and launched himself at the monk. End scene. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, we... um. I'm sure you guys all figured out we didn't really have parts there. We just kind of like we're reading it. Yeah. Kind of did in the beginning there. Yeah, it kind of did. And then it just kind of like I, there was yeah. no way. I was just like, whatever. That's all right. Yeah. It was good though. Yeah. Interesting. It was interesting. Yeah. The sap sphere has got me thinking. I don't know why. I just can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> I just have this like envisioning the sap sphere. Huh. Yeah. I know. All right. Maybe well, you it's can... kind of Easter time. So, I mean, I'm kind of like this big <laughs> egg like, is what I kind of like imagine. Like, well, maybe you can 
Create my own sap sphere. Yeah, or at least like draw <gasps> it or Oh my god. Or Imagine if like our I could I could be Zoya from the sap sphere in our commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like. What do you have to say, Zoya? Uh, kind of like. Um, She's. Oh, Han Solo in Star Wars. Oh my God! Imagine how hilarious it would be though if it like tied it into like that sap thing from Jurassic Park of them like do, do, moth. Do, 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 do. It pans uh, out and yes. Zoya's stuck in this She's... egg on top of a cane. Or like, <laughs> yeah, they show they they show the cane. And, like, he's carrying it around, but then, like, as they zoom in, like, farther and farther and farther, you see that it's actually Zoya. Poor Zoya. <laughs> <laughs> she's at the making of the heart of the world. She is. And she, <laughs> she, she's also how Ooh. we created dinosaurs. Y'all. Wow. Well, dr- never mind. Yeah, don't. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. I know you could find some way to spoil that for me, and I know No, that's- I wasn't going to. Dragon. Oh. Dinosaur dragon. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. Got it. Ooh, I apologize huh. fully <laughs> for my uh, for my mood tonight. Okay. It is crazy. We got All right. this. So chapter 31 follows my dear Nina. <laughs> and I have a very long quote in the beginning because it literally like spells out the plan. And yeah. Yeah. So there was just. You just got to read the whole thing. It I was mean. just easier. So. Their timing had to be precise. The well mother and the spring maidens would see to their charges on the factory ward and return sometime in the hours after midnight. Nina did not want to risk crossing paths with them, but she also needed to make sure they would have time to retrieve the girls, set the explosive, and get through the checkpoint on the road leading to town. If the guards at the checkpoint got a sign that something was wrong at the factory, they might well decide to investigate the vehicles passing through. And if that happened, there would be nowhere to hide. Two hours before dawn, Hannah bound her breasts and pulled a pinafore over one of her stolen military uniforms. She kept a shawl wrapped around her head. She and Nina slipped out through the kitchens and went to meet Leonie and Adric. I spelled that wrong in the thing. That's why I said that weird. At the abandoned tanning shed where they were waiting with the enclosed wagon they'd secured. They helped Adric into his uniform, stuffed his loose sleeve with cotton batting and pin the end into the pocket to disguise the missing hand oh wow <laughs> hannah tucked her pinafore away and took the driver's seat with adric beside her while nina and leone both attired as spring maidens climbed into the back they were silent as the they rode through the dark nina had laced her sleeves with her bone shards and she reached out to them now with her power Craving the peace they provided, she understood the risks she had asked the people around her to take and the danger she was putting them in, end quote. So literally, every word about that was what the plan was. (laughs) Yep, no editing that out. Yes, so it was a lot easier just to, like, say it. So, um, so Hana is looking like a a male soldier driving a wagon. You work. Yeah, let's go, girl. Work. Um, so they, <laughs> they made it past all the checkpoints thanks to Brum Seal and Hannah's acting. Nina says that she's a natural. Then Leone pours acid into the locks to get inside. Ew. When the others see the girls, because they haven't seen them yet, remember? Yeah. They were absolutely horrified. Like they can barely speak. Yeah. Nina passes out a milky white sedative to the girls that is made out of the stalks of the jerta plant instead of the leaves. Ooh. The girls are upset that it doesn't look like their dose, but well, they took it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you I'll craving what you it. Got. <laughs> exactly. I mean. And the four of them start escorting the girls out while Adric created an acoustic blanket to sound to like shield their sounds. Leone was setting the explosives when Nina heard her cry out. When ah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> just felt like you know. a little startled. Um, I was like, eh. um, when Nina went to see what happened, she saw Jarl Broom holding a pistol pointed out at Leone. That wasn't planned. Yeah, he's supposed to be out of town. Yeah. Yep. W- what are you doing? Why is he there? What are you doing? Um. So Nina stays hidden. But she's like slowly moving to get behind him because she wants to like take him out. She's creeping. <laughs> yes. <You're hungry>. ah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> Brum reached for the alarm 
But before he got to it, he just crumpled to the ground. <laughs> Hana is standing over him with a wrench. So she had bashed him over wow. the head, her own father. And she's crying about how, you know, how could he be capable of doing such a thing? So he's she's very mad at him. Clearly. Yeah, cle- yeah. Clearly. I don't think you, you express just bash your, your love. Yeah. For your, <laughs> yeah. So they need to go now. Those are some daddy issues. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, she's got so many daddy issues. So they need to go, like, right now. But Hana doesn't want to leave her father to die. So she doesn't hate him that badly. Uh, they, they literally, like, drag him towards the exit as they light all the fuses. But yet again, they're stopped. This time by the well mother. A pesky woman. <laughs> <laughs> she's always you, like in the you, way of like everything ugh, lord she yells for the guards to seize her but nina uses her power and she calls upon the dead one by one girls <laughs> who had died in the factory start speaking through nina telling their story which had to be extremely frightening yeah <laughs> just a little bit like at a seance when it's re- anyway really weird episode of walking dead yes going on well and then the dead bodies start like coming out of the ground and yeah. like coming through the door it's thriller and they're like <laughs> it's a little more than that a little bit, yeah. they're literally like killing the guards and grabbing the guns and they're going after the well mother nina just kind of oh, turns her back and walks away <laughs> as well mother is screaming so we can assume she did. Mm. They all take off in the wagon. All the women that they had taken, all the women and babies, they put in the back of the wagon. I don't know if that was clear earlier, but they put them all in the wagon. Right. And um, Nina, as she's getting in, sees um, Trassel again. Aww. And Trassel, Trassel has killed two people. It's not clear who they were. I'm assuming they're soldiers. Yeah. Because it doesn't say. It just says two bodies. It had um, to be. But I'm assuming soldiers. Right. Uh, and she also hears other wolves kind of up the up the mountain. So she um, she assumes that he's not alone and that he has found his pack and that he's happy. Mm. Oh, <laughs> puppy. puppy. <laughs> I love doggies. <laughs> the alarm sounded. Whoops. Ooh, ooh. And they knew that they wouldn't make the checkpoint now. No. Hana asked Nina, like, excuse me, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that's a fair question. It is. <laughs> but Nina just goes, nothing good. <laughs> and that's it. It's a great answer, too. Yes. Nothing good. It even says that, like, Hana doesn't even seem, like, angry. That she's just like, you know, what's happening? Wow. Um. Yeah, I would have been like, <laughs> you, <laughs> you could literally control, like, zombies. And, like, you wouldn't tell me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so at the checkpoint, they are halted by a bunch of soldiers with guns. Hana claims that they are working with Brom, but the soldiers were told by, told by Brom himself not to let anyone pass. Whoops. Oops. They, yeah. The soldiers um, send someone up to the factory to see what is happening, then open the doors to the wagon. The soldier was completely dumbfounded, not expecting to see a bunch of women and babies back Oopsie. there. And he demands that every single one of them get taken back up the mountain. Busted. Yeah. The end. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yep. Fierce. That's it. That's it, peeps. Wow. That's it. We did good. Yeah. Look at us. You know, we really do this. So <laughs> we are going to move on to the next segment. It's that time for. Grisha cast news. I I love that that graphic is this big fireball. Fire. It's like Ryan reminds me of Armageddon or something. Oh my gosh, it does look Doesn't like it? Armageddon. Oh my gosh, I don't want to miss a thing, Eric. So oh, let's go, Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we've got so. <laughs> okay, this has got to stop. Sorry, I my producer keeps making noises in my ear, and it makes me sound feel like I'm crazy because I start reacting to it. Oh, did okay, stop. He's talking to me now. Sounds like I'm talking to a ghost. Terry, stop me. So, um, <laughs> IMDb updated the amount of episodes that characters um, will be in. Um, and supposedly Ma- Matthias will be in five instead of one. And um, also the Shadow 
Bone Shop on Instagram is working with other artists to sell prints of their fan art, and all purchases will support Black Lives Matter and Stop Asian Hate. That's awesome. It is, and it's available through April 22nd, and Lee and the rest of the cast are supporting this, so it's in their Instagram stories, so check that out. And there's new promo photos. Um, there's just a lot of stuff releasing mm-hmm. right now. You know, we've got a lot going on. Um, the cool thing, New York Comic Con um, released more of those shirts that they had, which is um, actual Grisha order shirts, mm-hmm. like exclusive merch that we can actually like have and use. It's awesome. So um, anyways, and let's see. Rule of Wolves is number one on the New York Times bestselling mm-hmm. bestseller list. That's awesome. So, and thank you, um, Alex, for helping us with our news. Yes. Yeah. Thank so, you, Alex. and yeah, of course, we are going to be releasing more information about mm-hmm. our Grisha Watch. Yes. So just stay tuned. Um, watch. We're going to pretty much put out a schedule. We're going to get all that figured out so we can all have fun and enjoy that. And um, let's see. So, oh, I want to thank an Instagram listener, mm-hmm. Amusing Muses. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I saw that you posted a little story, and that was very nice of you. Thank you yes, so much. thank you for mentioning us. And we love that you, we love you. Yes. So, yes. Bring it. Okay, so I have. What you got? <laughs> I've been thinking. Uh-oh. I rewatched the trailer again. Oh. And then I started thinking about our friend Inej. Yes. She has her nice friends that have different names. Yes. Same. One of them is named. Alina. Uh huh. Right. So, why would she name one of her knives after Alina if her job was to go capture her? So, I think mm. if we think about our maybe she crows, mm. how they never do what <laughs> what they're hired to do. They always come up with another plan to make more money and to kind of screw over the big wigs. Yeah. I think that they're going to be called upon or going to be hired to capture Alina. Right. But they're going to come up with their own plan and they're actually going to be working with Alina. And that makes sense. And that's why Inej has a knife named after her. But no, because I mean, you got to think also the timeline though, because Alina wouldn't be a saint yet. So she wouldn't. Right. But like she had to have like, like thought positively of Alina to yeah. name her knives, or maybe she named that. Maybe she had like maybe she just hadn't done the Alina knife yet. Right. Well, she wouldn't have done that yeah. at the time, but I mean, like later yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was thinking about how, how they would do that. Because Inej also like the way that she is. She's yeah. She she's, couldn't be somebody to go after someone like that. No, she's got a heart. So I don't think, and that helps your conscious too because you were very worried about them being against alina so i i think I that they're going to come up with their own plan and they're actually going to be on alina's side and it's gonna make that's sense. my that's my new theory i i like it i see where you're going with that because you know, they kaz always comes up with something else yeah he does because it's it's got to figure his own out plan well exactly because i mean what benefit would he get out yeah. of i mean he's got to get something else out of this whole thing and i think that maybe the um that big uh, there's like Skiff? a mechanical oh the train weird thing yeah i think that might be maybe like... one of um oh no he's too he'd be too young i was gonna say maybe it's one of david's like no not i mean it could be david's but i was oh, thinking maybe uh... it's one of nikolai's things but he's just a boy at this point so it wouldn't yeah well no he w- i don't think he'd be a boy he's just not entered until like chapter um, until the second book yeah, he's not too far behind yeah, he's the rest not. of them. Because I was thinking maybe it's one of Sturman's things, so we might see Sturman. It could be. Maybe it... they'll show Sturman and they won't like say that he's Nikolai. I like that you said, I think it was last episode, that you said it re- that it was very steampunky. And that, yeah, I totally, that so is yeah, very like, steampunky. I thought it might have been attached to like Ketterdam because it's dark or whatever. But when I was thinking about it, like Nikolai has all these crazy contraptions. So like oh, it yeah. could be a Sturman thing. It totally could because be. Because Sturman... I don't know. Like, I have to go back because he doesn't really enter the whole Alina thing until they go for the sea whip. 
Yeah, it, I mean, yeah, because he doesn't. But he could with... have done something. Oh, like, absolutely, they... because he was in the. He might not. Have, he might not have like met up with Lena until then. But he was already Sturman by the time yeah. she was doing the sea whip. So that might be one of his contraptions. It could be. It'd be really cool if it was. Yes. And I think it's just. I think it's going to be really neat. I think they're going to do an incredible job of this. I'm not worried about it at all. I think it's going to be so cool, and it's going to tie in wonderfully. Oh, yes. Like, it's just going to make this world even bigger and broader, and it's all going to make sense. I don't think Lee's going to let anything, like, not make sense. I, I feel like, because, I mean, like, I, from the direction that she's given, she's pretty much, like, said, yes, there were some things that she said that they wouldn't like let her do mm -hmm. but she also was giving them fair warning like hey you can't do this thing here because that's really gonna blow up things later right so anyways i'm excited it's gonna be wonderful and um so i just had to give you my i like it my well, new thoughts you. hey <laughs> pop them out while you got them mm -hmm, i get them all the time Ooh. my brain doesn't stop it does not neither did mine <laughs> so well next week we're going to be doing chapters 32 through 35, and then, does that make sense? Yeah, it does, because then we're going to be... Can we only have one week after that? Yeah. Yep. It's going to be the last week, and then, oh my God, the show's going to be I here. know, that means... That we're... means like, <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, wow. So yeah. we got one more week to do We have two more weeks. Yeah. Next okay. week and the week after that. Girl, we got a lot to do. And then do. the show. We have so much to do. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So, well, anyways, it's been wonderful, peeps. Yes. We love you all. And, um, yeah, stay tuned. We'll hopefully get you some more information about the Grisha Watch. And, um, hey, we're on TikTok now. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> and if you want to see something fun, I'm going to do a little, it's not tarot. It's called Lenorma cards mm -hmm. and it's kind of like tarot cards. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to do a, like, psychic reading about what, I think might happen or what happened in the second half of rule of wolves. Ooh. So if you want to check that out, go to our TikTok. <laughs> it's going to be funny. It's going to be interesting. I haven't yep. done it yet. So <laughs> we're going to figure that one out. We'll figure it out. Anyways. Okay. It's been great. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Like we're at the end of the hour. So my voice is a little husky. No mourners. No funeral. This has been GrishaCast. Connect with us on the web at GrishaCast.com. Send an email to info at GrishaCast.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok at GrishaCast.